money or meaning? Which one would you choose? On one hand, a well-paid job you don't enjoy doing. Something that inflates your bank account, but makes you realize that on the inside, something is missing. On the other hand, fulfilling exciting work that pays little. Something that makes a difference, but makes you wonder constantly whether the next paycheck will cover your bills. Sound familiar? It does to me. And certainly that legion of my brain cells who have perished thinking about this dilemma for more than a decade. But finally, I think I might have figured it out. I grew up in a working class family in a building like this. And yup, that's a full color photo. <laughs> the 90s were not an easy time in Latvia. Our country had just regained its independence. We had to restart the market economy from scratch and most people did not have a lot of money. In 1995, <clears throat> when I started school, the average Latvian was making 100 euros per month. Now, don't get me wrong, we were not poor. Prices were also extremely low, so our family managed to get by, but we didn't have much left over by the end of the month. So, what do you want to be when you grow up was never an easy question for me, since I could never steer away from thinking about money. But hey, it's still fun to think about the future when you're a kid. However, when you're in college, that dreadful choice of what to do with your life looks less like this beautiful thunderstorm somewhere on the horizon and more like a hurricane slapping cows in your face. As it turns out, getting a great education does not help either. There are just so many options. In uh, 2011, I was about to graduate from the University of Pennsylvania and I had to make my first choice. First off, I had to decide where I wanted to go next. Money meant staying abroad. That's where the money is, right? New York, London, perhaps even Philly. Certainly not Riga, even in 2011. Certainly not Burtzims, my colorful little suburb. <laughs> and meaning meant Latvia. When I left, I was determined to come back or at least do something to contribute to our country. Second, I had to decide what I wanted to do. I was about to graduate with a degree in international relations, a field I enjoyed and I cared about. Plus, it would allow me to represent Latvia internationally as a diplomat. However, in 2009, Latvia suffered terribly in the financial crisis, and the government cut the wages for all our diplomats in half. So, as much as my inner hippie would say, just follow your heart, dude, <laughs> I simply could not ignore the money. So I joined an oil and gas publication that, for the next three years, took me country hopping around the world. Brunei, Ghana, Nigeria, Qatar. No connection to Latvia whatsoever. In 2016, I was ready to return home. I'd quit my job, I got my master's at Columbia University. I felt I was equipped well enough to start a business here. Although I would not become a diplomat, at least I could try to create some jobs in the country. And that gi would give it all some sense of meaning, right? However, it's not like I had a billion dollar idea, a stellar team, six figures in seed money. I kind of figured, you know, once I've settled in, gone to a few hackathons, something good would come along. And in the meantime, why not do something meaningful with my spare time? So as someone who had spent about a third of his life abroad before coming back, um, I was deeply interested in migration as it applied to Latvia. You know, after all, if you care about your country, then 15% of its population leaving within a decade might seem slightly troubling. So I dabbled. With a few friends, we organized a meetup that would bring together Latvians who had lived abroad. We named it with Global Experience in Latvia. And there comes my first lesson about what happens in life when you do something that means a lot for you. Our little meetup exploded. Although we paid no money for ads, our venue was always packed. The number of our followers grew by the hundreds every week, and some wonderful friends would join the core team every month. So give the devil your little finger, right? Six months later, I found myself leading an official non-governmental organization with a registration number and everything. That was not a path I had ever imagined myself taking. However, I relished the chance to work on something that deeply interested me, 
even if I had to do it for free. Sooner or later, I would figure out what to do with my 9 to 5, but for now, at least the 6 to 9 part was covered. And, in the words of your favorite BuzzFeed headline, what happens next will surprise you. <laughs> Early on in our meetups, employers started asking whether we could share their job ads with our followers. After all, migration and employment went hand in hand. Wages in Latvia had been rising 10% a year, the unemployment rate was critically low, and media sites were full of posts about the lack of labor in Latvia. So after some conversations, it all started to come together. Perhaps I did not have to choose between money or meaning. If I could help talented professionals return to Latvia and connect them to their future employers, the companies would surely pay for our services. So with some luck, I could do something meaningful and feed myself. Aha, don't you think? <laughs> so that's how the idea about your move was born. Together with Reynis, my good friend and a fellow board member of the NGO, we co-founded the job platform in 2018 with the aim of bringing talented professionals to Latvia, both Latvian returnees and also foreigners who'd like to move to our country. The first two years have not been easy, but we have established good relations with more than 50 businesses, helped dozens of professionals move to Latvia, gathered a wonderful team of people and grown our turnover almost 200% this year compared to the last one. Turns out, what we do even has a name. So let me reintroduce myself. Hi, my name is Janis Kreilis, and I'm a social entrepreneur. Working on your move feels right, because I don't have to choose money or meaning. To us, both are important, and both feed off and amplify each other. First, what we are doing means a lot to me. I like to shape my surroundings rather than be shaped by them. The more talented people we could get to join us in Latvia, the more our country, instead of this, will look like this. And even if it's the first drops in the ocean, we're helping Latvia develop, and that gives our work purpose. But second, it's also how we're doing it that makes sense to me. I think in systems, and for me, building a business means building a sustainable system. And ours goes like this. The more candidates we attract, the more candidates we can place. The more candidates we place, the more money we get. The more money we get, the more we can invest in marketing to get more candidates. Voila. So let's complicate it a bit. To make more ads or sort through resumes, we need more teammates. The more money we get, the more people we can hire. And our team definitely needs a nice office to work in. So the higher the profit, the better the office. Plus, I know for a fact, my colleagues love that upgrade from the rich and creamy taste of Nescafe 3-in-1 <laughs> to a nice little espresso machine. <laughs> so you see, money drives our model, which in turn makes more money. The reality is that you can do very little without the money. But what feels great about money in a company like ours is that it ultimately helps change our society. Without money, despite our best intentions, we would achieve much less meaning. This model is our shot at unleashing this internal energy for this system to perpetuate itself. We're not building a project, we're building a business. And here's the super cool thing. Meaning also helps you make more money. First, our purpose distinguishes us from the crowd. We're operating in a very packed market, and I'm absolutely convinced I would not be standing in front of you today if we had created just another little job site without this clear social goal. To be fair, businesses will almost never sign a deal with us simply because of some warm feelings we might create, but our purpose helps us open a lot of doors. Second, Having our, helping our country overcome an existential social problem gives us a chance to share our story, our insights, and our expertise with the media. And this way, we get the word out to more potential candidates and businesses so that the cycle can go on. Third, meaning helps us attract some great teammates and keep our own team motivated. You know what they say about the millennials? Supposedly, they need purpose in their work. 
So it's rewarding in our own job interviews when I ask about why people would like to join us is to hear, because I love what you do. And finally, meaning does two important things for me personally. Building my own business is by far the most difficult thing I've done in my life. There have been times where I felt like a cell phone on 5% battery, my eyes both glaring red like two indicators, no charger in sight, but then I hear about yet another smart person moving to Latvia with a good job offer, and I get this energy to keep going. Having meaning also means you can get away with a little less money. Hopefully you noticed in this diagram that more money does not mean a bigger car for Giannis. <laughs> I love what I do, so I don't have to buy these temporary shots of meaning in the form of gadgets. So sure, I draw a reasonable salary, but I'm happy to reinvest our profits and let this uh, system grow more to help us achieve more. Let it grow big enough, and I'm sure one day you'll spit out a shiny new, Mer well, not maybe a Mercedes, but I don't know, a, a Toyota? So to me, money or meaning is the wrong question to ask. To really thrive, we humans need both. Meaning gives you purpose and focus, while money gives you the energy to keep fighting towards your goal. And my best analogy for this is different forms of light. Low energy and focus is like lighting a match. You get a small flame, but it dies out very quickly, in a few seconds. Now, low energy and high focus is like turning on a flashlight. If you are the only person with a flashlight during a power outage, I promise you, you pretty much become a modern-day Prometheus, the bearer of light. But the flashlight will only cover that little white circle, and the batteries will die out eventually. High energy but low focus is like wrapping your entire house in Christmas lights. Sure, they'll impress your kids, or let's be honest, they'll impress the Joneses, but the joy only lasts for a few weeks, and let's just say they're not quite essential to your family's well-being. And high energy and high focus, that's a laser. Give it enough power, and the highly concentrated beam of light will cut through all obstacles in front of you like a laser. I do admit that escaping the choice between money and meaning can seem daunting. However, by creating your move, our social enterprise, I found a way to get out of this dilemma. It's not the only way, but it is one way, and one that I personally have found to be very enjoyable. With some creative thinking and strategic planning, I'm sure we can find other ways out of the seeming prison of two alternatives. So money or meaning is a false choice. Look beyond it. Thank you.